Nice. Nice one ready. Oh, okay. All right. Good evening. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, first item on the agenda is to review and approve minutes. I don't believe we have any. No minutes. Um, the next item on the agenda is to sign bills. No bills. Moving right along. Um, I'm going to announce the continued meetings till next month. Um, uh, 5 Flanagan Drive, 142 Clinton Street, 2022 Greylock Ave, and 195 Gulf Street uh, continue to our next meeting. On April 16th. April 16th. Our first item on the agenda is a new public meeting. Notice is hereby given in accordance with the provisions of General Laws Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Town of Shrewsbury Wetlands Bylaw and Regulations that Ger Jared DeWolf, 158 South Quinsigamond Avenue, Shrewsbury, has filed a request for determination of applicability for the construction of a paver patio and retaining walls at 158 South Quinsigamond Avenue. I do. Sure. Hi. So the existing structure now is a paver patio. Are you Jared DeWolf? Yes, I'm Jared. The um, existing structure now is a paver patio with a rock wall. I want to lower, take the, pa the patio out and lower it about 18 inches or so, and then just reconfigure the wall to make more sense for the, the property. I bought an abutting property and, and blended them together. So just the way that the previous owner did it when he first built the house, he just kind of like stockpiled dirt and then dumped it right down to the, like the, the land, if you can see, you can kind of see from the photos. So I was hoping to just take the curse out of that, that original hill out, um, take the patio out and then just kind of fix the wall up a little bit and put some plants down the side of the hill. Uh, do you have a, um the design for the wall or what type what wall is there what, what what type of paver what are you gonna do with the wall so right now there's like you can see the existing patio so I'll just take that out and plant grass and then the wall that's there now is just a like a granite like granite crushed stones and I was gonna take those out and put a concrete just poured wall less than four feet just to take the kind of the, the spot out of the hill and then another one where I, I kind of drew, um, you can kind of see where it goes up the edge of the, the property a little bit, like the, the, the two little rock walls and there's a little one where there's an existing patio. Mm -hmm. I think here. So I just want to kind of make it, it was just kind of all just dropped on there. So I just want to take it out and make it right, or clean it up a little bit. Oh God! Sorry. I'm just trying to share an aerial so that you can see. That's what. <laughs> but I'm having immense difficulty with it. One second. So where is this in proximity to the uh, the property line to your abutter? Is it near? The the walls. Yeah. There it. There's like three pie shapes that come down, so the the existing wall is on the property line, and and that is your prop. You own both properties. Yeah. So there's well, where the existing wall is now is on the property line of the an abutter. So. But, okay. So how would you ensure that it would? Is it? It's on all on your property. It, I I surveyed the property and, and ha I'll have it. I'm gonna obviously have it staked. Okay. But it's all gonna be surveyed. Well, it's already been surveyed by Jarvis. Okay. But they surveyed, but they didn't stake or didn't put markers in? They put some markers in, um, but I haven't had it, like, a f I haven't had it staked for the construction yet. I was going to wait until an approval and then stake it. But he has, he has put marks in, and I worked with, with them to put mm -hmm. all the property lines in. I, I think... I think we probably need a little bit more detail with where the wall is shown on the plan with your s surveyor. That way we can know exactly how it appears um, in case there's any discrepancy. Okay. 
I mean, I, what you're doing, I, I, I don't think we really have a problem with exactly what you're doing. It's just that we want to make sure it's in the right location with reference to the property lines and, and the lake. Even if I'm replacing the existing wall just with the new one in the, in the same spot? Well, I, and I understand that, but the way it's shown on the plane, there's no, it's kind of just a drawing, hand drawing, and there's no reference to any so scaled. There's no scale. There's no, you know what I'm trying to say? You can't, we can't lock it down. So if we physically went out there with a plan, if Leia went out to look at it and she took some measurements, I mean, there's nothing really there just to give us any idea how it, how it is working. You, you said you had it surveyed. I don't think it would be a big deal to put it on the plan. Okay. How, how tall is the existing wall? Um, is, it, is the new wall going to be taller or shorter? It's act. It'll. Can I see some of those pictures? It's gonna be. The, it'll be. Actually, it'll be lower because what they did was they okay. built it. They've just built it on like a mound of dirt. So I'm just gonna take a. I was gonna take the patio out. Right. Take a little bit of the dirt out and then just Here lower the it. wall. Okay. Like Sarah, can you show us on this plan exactly what, that, what, it, which one it is? So here's the wall now. Oh, it's up there. Yeah. Oh. This is the wall now. This is like 30. I think 35 feet off of the property. Okay. Off of the, off of the um, waterfront. Mm -hmm. So this wall now is is um, just goes up the hill. So I just want to take the curse out of this this hill a little bit and take this patio out and then just lower this wall essentially right back in its place, but just 18 inches lower. And then this is just a mound of dirt right here. No. So it's just gonna. And it dings it. Okay. So it's just gonna pour okay. while I'm pouring while I'm pouring this wall. I was just gonna pour a little wall right here to just try to you know make it a little bit cleaner. So there's no, then there'll be enough patio right here. Are you taking all the additional fill away? Yeah, I was just going to bring it right up to the top of the hill and put it into a truck. So there's nothing on the shoreline? No. So that's, I'm, I'm interested to in that too, Ken, because I thought that was going on. So it no, has proper erosion control, but you don't have any detail of what you're putting there. There it is. Okay, thank you. So you can kind of see, like, this is the aerial too. I just want to take that, that patio out and put uh -huh. the grass. And then I was going to plant some. And this is the wall, I see. Thing. The market yeah. on it. Okay. So how far? How, where would you put the hay bales and fill fence? Um, I guess right here, right, right up against the uh, the wall. So right before it, obviously. Yes. Okay. It's um, it's your landscape detail says you're going to plant native shrubs. Do you do you know what those are yet? I was going to put um, like like raspberry bushes and blueberry bushes down the hill. Okay. I'm not sure that raspberry bushes are native shrubs, but the blueberries are. Oh, and you can see from, I believe there's one more photo. Oh. Nope, not oh, there. You, you, this you, one down there. You may oh, also okay. not really want to be putting in raspberries because they spread all over the place. Just to say. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, stabby brambles there. everywhere. See how this hill is like very like just like steep right here. They just filled it in when they did this original house up here. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was just going to try to take a little bit of the curse out of the hill. So you're going to remove the remove that material and put grass back? Yes. All right. And are you replacing the the paver stones here, or? I was going to take them out and plant grass. And plant grass, okay. For the little guy. Okay. Yeah, the little guy, yes. Okay. Well, that clears up a lot. Yeah. Um, any other questions from anybody? None for me. Are you, are you, do you still want to? No, I, 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 I thought it was closer to the lake, so I'm, okay. I'm kind of good. Okay. I okay. thought it was at the lake. Yeah, so I'm, <laughs> so. I'm good with it. Absolutely. All right. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we issue a negative de uh, determination of applicability for the construction of a paver patio and retaining walls at 158 South Quinn Avenue. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 So that's good. <laughs> Thank you. We have a new public hearing. 
notice is hereby given in accordance with the provisions of General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Town of Shrewsbury Wetlands Bylaw and Regulations that Crystal Reed, 25 Van Ness Avenue, Shrewsbury, has filed a request for determination of applicability for the removal of four trees at 218 Old Mill Road. So it's, uh, yeah. Hi, uh, I'm Jason. I live at 218 Old Mill Road. Crystal is my neighbor at 25 Van Ness. So we're talking about the trees uh, in my backyard. Um, yeah, there's a stream that runs right at the edge of my backyard uh, facing her house. And so there's a number of uh, limbs that keep falling into her yard and through, through the stream. So we're not asking to remove the entire tree, just the top section so that they don't keep falling into the stream. So there's two trees, two dead trees that we're asking to remove the limbs of. And then the third tree is on my side yard uh, closer to the old mill roadside and it's leaning towards my house again not asking to remove the entire tree just cut it uh, like around halfway so it does, if it does fall it doesn't fall onto my house this says four trees um, I put in the request for th so one of the trees is a multi you know, multi, 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 multi trunked so it's one two three okay yeah, see that the tree in the photo. Oh my gosh, that's so small. So um, one three trunk tree, and then another tree farther up towards. Leaning towards the house, yeah. They've been dropping really. We're not talking little limbs. We're talking take a chainsaw out, split the wood. They're big. Could you and that parts of the trunks of the tree. That three trunk tree is is dead or. The holes were dead. It's dead. dead. And it's dead. It's dead. Is that the one? Okay. Is this the image of the tree that's leaning over your house? Yes. Okay. So this one right in the... Okay. So it's healthy, but I, I, I'm afraid if it does fall because it's, it's pretty wet back there. Mm -hmm. So how, uh, is the, uh, how are you going to take the trees down and what are you going to do with the, with the... They're going to remove... Um, so for the ones on near the stream, they're going to come through her, her yard drive the trucks down the, her yard and then remove, and they're gonna remove all the wood. And the ones on my side, they're gonna come from my yard. So they're going to be able to um, access the tree without driving in the wetlands? Correct. Yeah, it would be on grass. Okay. Are they using a, a crane? Probably a boom, yeah. Okay. Would you be amenable? Pretty, pretty tall trees, these are pretty, pretty mature trees. Would you be amenable to leaving the wood there? Maybe not in the stream, because that seemed like a... Sorry? Um, the concern had been blocking the stream, so it could be left in the wetland without being left right. in the streamway. Right. Um, sorry, I'll let you continue answering her question for the purpose. For what purpose? <laughs> like, why would you leave the wood? I'm sorry, I can't hear you, please. For what purpose? Why would you leave the wood? Because the wood is as it decays will return nutrients to the ground it's part of the whole ecosystem okay um so it's very wet swampy actually on the other side of the stream towards his house and it would decay if you if you want but they're not small trees you know like the double trunk one is probably 22 inches each trunk and they're pretty significantly high so you're talking quite a bit of log mm -hmm. Which is oh, grown. More than could actually be in that area, if you ask me. It's not a big area wide from the stream. You know what I mean? It's probably 25 feet from the stream on my side, right. the edge to his grass. You, his you see this, that, that line in the center? That's the stream yeah. between our two houses. It's a lot of tree, you know, because they're big and they're, they're, they're mature trees. Mm -hmm. But they're dying. As, as they decay, they'll provide habitat for salamanders and woodpeckers and insects. They'll grow insects that will feed the birds. So where would you want them to, to be laid? Could, like on the side of the stream or? Can they be filled so that they drop in line with the stream? Sure, could. You mean parallel too? Yeah. yeah. 
It is a wet swamp land area. They could do that, no problem. Sure. There are other trees there too. It's not very open. There are some other trees, but they could, they could do their best. Let's say that. Yeah. Yeah. If there's space in them. Yeah. Sure. Okay. You said you're not taking the whole tree, so you're going to leave some of the trunk standing on all of them? Uh, low enough so that they don't also fall into the stream. Right. Right. Uh, one of them, the double trunk, is quite close to the stream in terms of its size. So, you know, we have no problem really letting them sort of decay just as long as they don't fall into the stream because to date I've been the one cleaning them out of the stream. Mm. Do you have flooding issues from the stream? No. I don't. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Any other questions? Mm -mm. No other questions for me. Ask for public comment. Any, any uh, comment from the public? Do you no. have a preferred minimum height to be left by the stream? Or could that be an alternative to leaving the felled trunks? I'm sorry. Please speak. I'm up. sorry. <laughs> Do you have a uh, preferred height for leaving the stumps, or um, and could that be an alternative to leaving the felled stumps or felled felled trunks? Um, you know, my my preferred height for the for the stumps would be six to eight feet. Um, again, we're providing habitat for woodpeckers, et, et cetera. Uh, as long as that did not, I'm not so worried about them blocking the stream. That, that happens and streams move and that's, that's okay. Um, but I would be, I don't want, I want to avoid um, any potential structural damage, you know, when the stumps eventually, if they do fall. So make them short enough so that they're not endangering any sheds or houses or anything like that. Could you do that with six to eight feet? I, I, I think six would do for the one that's a double trunk that's closer to the stream. It seems like it could. Yeah, okay. on my side, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the one that's that's leaning next to your house, how much of that do you want to take down? It's very, very long. I don't know, 25 feet. Mm -hmm. If I can at least get it down to 10, 15 feet, that'd be fine. Okay. Yeah, it looks like there's there's a distance to your to to your lawn. There is. Okay. But then if if it does fall as is, it'll it's definitely gonna hit my deck at this point. Right, right. Okay, so that one I think we want to trim back enough so that it doesn't hit any structures. Right, right. That's um, and you could concern. even trim it back enough so that it doesn't get into your lawn area. Okay. And I think that would that would be fine. Okay. And they could lay that wood right there if. Great. That's fine. Anything else? Um, the only thing, maybe uh, just before you start and you schedule your tree clearance, you let you let uh, Aaliyah know okay. so she can she knows what's going on, and if she wants, she can take a ride out and take a look to, to verify everything's going right. the way we want. Okay. All right. Do we have a motion then? Uh, I make a motion that we issue a negative determin determination for the removal of <laughs> it, I'll say four trees because that's how it's written at 218 Old Mill Road um, with the condition that either the wood from the trees near the stream be left on site or that the trees that a an eight foot six to eight foot um, trunk be left and for the tree that is in Mr. Lee's yard, um, leaning over towards his house, that what did you say? Fifteen feet. Fifteen feet. Fifteen. Fifteen feet of the of the remaining tree be left. <laughs> it's a mouthful. I second it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. You're all set. Thank you. Thank you. We have a uh, continued public hearing regarding an notice of intent filed by Essex Petre, 1900 West Park Drive, Suite 180 Westboro, for the construction of residential multifamily community consisting of 300 units, clubhouse, and supporting amenities in infrastructure at 33 
69 Green Street. I didn't get any notification that they were going to continue, but maybe. Um, they mentioned that I think at last meeting they? they were okay. going to probably continue, but that's okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll just leave it open and we'll go from there. Okay. All right. So we have a continued public hearing regarding the notice of intent filed by Paul Winstead. 654 South Street, Shrewsbury, for the construction of removal of a shed and construction of a patio and outdoor kitchen at 654 South Street. Hi, everyone. Zoe Sanchez here with Goddard Consulting with the homeowner, Paul. Um, I have a, a copy of the revised plan that we submitted. I don't know if I need to. You guys probably can't see it from there anyway, right? Or would you like me to put it up? No. Put it up anyway. I can put it up. Nice <laughs> Is that the same as what we're looking at here? Yes. Okay, good. Exactly, thanks. So at the last hearing, um, we had some requests uh, to be made, changes to be made to the site plan. One being a change to the locust map, uh, which was done here. Also a construction architectural detail of the stone wall that will be located on the left side of the patio uh, was added to the right side of the plan. And the third thing was uh, the erosion control. Um, after looking at the erosion control, um, we really looked at the area and realized that, um, so we have it along pretty much the 15 foot and then as it goes down, on the left side there, um, we have it just below where the patio is, just to allow some workspace to be made to be open for them to go in and install the patio. Um, moving it up would just make it really difficult since it's so tight on that right side. So that would allow them to get in there and be able to do the work. Um, and so we have that there. It is within previously disturbed grass area um, lawn. And I think those were the three main things that needed to be addressed at the last hearing. And you have a planting area? What, was that an existing planting area or a new planting area? A new planting area, yeah, with some natives. Okay. <clears throat> hey, um, Diane? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I think there's a. Uh, I'm, I'm just remembering things incorrectly here. Um, this uh, this area, it's going to be. It's going to be deck. It's going to be paved. Is it going to be pavers? What's it going to be? It's going to go ahead. It's, it's pavers. Pavers. Yes. So, um, I just have a question. Yes. If you are considering using. Um, Pervious pavers, water will simply go right down through, and it will not run off. And in the winter time, water will not uh, stay on the pavers and won't freeze, because it will simply melt right down through. Um, and that way, also, if the hot tub is emptied at some point, and I, I think they get emptied every fall, right? Um, the water could get, just go right down through, even. Um, so uh, that's a, a consideration. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Martha? I'm all set. <coughs> no questions. Alea? I would just recommend a special condition that um, the plantings be, um, the plantings along the patio be native. Um, and then you may want to consider something that the, that if the hot tub is emptied at yearly, that that's not directed towards the wetland area um, or that it's properly um, you know, D, whatever, chemicaled um, before, and that it's, you know, not gushing. Yeah, sure. And right, that's, that's part of what I was trying to say with the previous pavers, right. that you can actually get, get it going down straight into the ground right. instead of rushing off into, well, an area. I'll, I'll talk to the people who are going to do the construction to see what they suggest they uh, Right. Yeah. They've, they're really well made these days. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, want to, I want to use as much natural stuff as I can, if I can possibly. Yeah. Um, and it was always my intention to put 
like native plants there, because we have a lot of hummingbirds and stuff like that. <coughs> they will appreciate that. Yes. If you have any questions about what pervious pavers look like yes. or can look like, uh, the <laughs> my place of work is Broad Meadowbrook Wildlife Sanctuary, and the whole front patio in front of the Welcome Center is pervious pavers. Right. Bring a jar of water and pour it right on there. Right. Is it, is it like a cement, or is it, what is it? Uh, well, they're, they're made they're from like various things, but there's a little bit of a space in between, mm -hmm. and underneath there's the, there's gravel of various sizes. Oh, right. uh, not real fine size, because that clogs <coughs> it up. Right. You have to do the, the correct sizing, um, but it really works extremely well. Right. I think I'll look into that, yeah. yeah. Any, uh, anybody in the audience have any questions? Sorry. Are we all set here? All right, I, we're all set. I guess we can close the hearing. Thank you. the agenda is a oh, I'm sorry I just had a quick question um, are we voting to issue the order of conditions as well we'll we'll vote at the end of the meeting oh you voted we the close the meet we close the hearing and we'll vote on all the closed uh, hearings at the end oh okay thank you okay. <clears throat> all right so next item on the agenda is continued public hearing regarding the notice of intent filed by Lake 20 LLC 360 Hartford Turnpike for the construction of a self storage facility and associated site work at 170 Hartford Turnpike. Uh, thank you, John Grenier, Jam Grenier Associates. Um, since our last hearing, um, we had submitted the final plans over to. Uh, Ecotech, who had, they had walked the wetland line with the applicant's uh, consultant wetland scientist. Um, the, they did provide a, um, a review letter, and in that letter, uh, they did confirm that they agree with the, the line that was flagged in the field and walked with um, the applicant's consultant, environmental engineer. Um, they also had some other comments regarding the, uh, the bordering vegetated, um, not the bordering, but the, the... Bordering land subject to flooding. Thank you. <laughs> Took the words out of my mouth. Bordering <laughs> land subject to flooding. Lots of acronyms. Um, so we received that at the end of the week. Um, I forwarded that information on to Matthew Morrow, who was, the, again, the environmental consultant for the applicant. Um, he put together a letter, which I received this afternoon, um, with his, uh, I guess, response and his evaluation of the site. Um, and what he um, uh, do you have a copy of that letter, or I have extra copies? Um, I do have copies. I put it on the line, but yeah, we I think they had the opportunity to print it out. Today. Thank you. Thanks. Tomorrow letter? Yes. <coughs> I have it. I'm good. Oh, yeah. Yep, I got it. Okay. Oh, thank you. Uh, the major. Uh, comment from Mr. Morrow, and he had it highlighted in yellow, was uh, regarding the, uh, the, the habitat, um, the value of that bordering land subject to flooding for habitat, which um, in one of the sections of, of the regulation under 310 CMR 10.57, uh, it says, 
it excludes uh, areas which have so extensively been altered by human activity that their importance to wildlife habitat functions have been effectively eliminated, which includes areas, paved areas, graveled areas, golf courses, et cetera. Um, this historically was an, a, a site or a portion of the site that was excavated out. They, somebody went in. You can see there's still a access cart path through there. There's areas where there are some boulders piled up and this was excavated out to take the gravel out and that is what had created this depression even though slight it's less than uh, probably six inches less than a foot below the the flood plain so uh, in his opinion this that area is not um, significant for protection for wildlife habitat and then his final conclusion in the, it's the last paragraph, um, he says the area of mitigation that we are proposing will remove a good deal of the invasive vegetation and replace it with vegetation that's more suitable to wildlife habitat than what exists on the property currently. So um, for the record, we just wanted to make sure that, you know, this is something that the board considers uh, when reviewing this. Uh, in terms of the plans, I reviewed, uh, you know, obviously what the concerns of the commission are, which um, they understand. It's his uh, belief that we're meeting the regulations, that um, it's in compliance with DEP standards, and he'd like to stick with the application um, as it stands with the last revised set of plans. Um, and they'd look to actually close the hearing and um, have the board vote on it and have you, have you vote whichever way you're gonna vote on it. Um, so we, we do have this, we, you do have the peer review memo. I just wanna we make do. sure you did receive it and you did you, and I know you made comment on it with your with your um, expert too. Yeah. But I mean, it's in contrast. He's our, our expert is saying that those areas are significant and they are uh, significant to uh, habitat. So we're at we're at a um, we're at odds with that. So understood. Um, you know, and you know, and as we said before, this new project is five times larger than the than the previously approved project, which there is an outstanding order of conditions for. So um, I just wanted to make sure that was in the record too. Okay. Um, Diane, do you have any questions? Well, yeah, um, yeah, I'd actually like to read some of this out loud. Sure, sure yeah. go right ahead. Okay, uh, so we didn't get what you handed us ahead of time, so we didn't get time to study it. and. Mm -hmm. I'm actually the kind of person who does that, and I would love it if I had it ahead of time. But what I did have in front of me is, it says this, the, um, the project as revised will significantly alter 16,657 square feet of wooded BLSF and large portions of the wooded buffer zone up to the edge of wetland. The capacity of the buffer zone to protect the interests of the Wetlands Protection Act will be eliminated. It will be difficult or impossible to construct the project as designed without directly altering wetlands due to construction-related erosion and sediment runoff. The loss of buffer zone in the long term will likely alter wetlands due to loss of shading, loss of organic matter, and loss of the filtering capacity of the buffer zone. It is my understanding that this project predates the Shrewsbury Wetland Bylaws and is not subject to the bylaws statutory wetland setbacks. That being said, the commission has the ability to limit and to condition work in the buffer zone through 310 CMR 10.531. And it goes on to say the extent of work proposed within wooded BLSF requires the consideration of wildlife habitat as noted in the regulatory citation copied below. Habitat mitigation is required for impacts of important BLSF habitat in excess of 5,000 square feet Native plantings are proposed for BLSF, uh, compensatory storage areas proposed, but those areas only compensate for 9,000 
60 square feet of the 16,657 square feet proposed to be altered. Typically, once the 5,000 square foot threshold has been exceeded, mitigation is required for the entire area of altered BLSF containing important habitat. So it's not a question, it's, it's just, I just want to get that on the record. Understood. Yep. Martha? Uh -uh. Anything else that? Chris? No questions. Alea? No, I don't think I have any questions at this time. Anybody in the audience have any questions? Okay. So we'd like to close the hearing? Yes, please. Okay. Do you have one question, please? Oh, okay. Could you state again which item this is? 170 Hartford Turnpike, 285-1980. Thank you. Uh-huh. Okay. The hearing's closed. Okay. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is a continued public hearing regarding a notice of intent filed by Melitros Jachion, 115 Northeast Cut, Cut Off Realty Trust, 1 West Boylston Street, Worcester, for the construction of two commercial buildings with parking driveways and commercial loading areas, as well as two stormwater BMPs at 369 Holden Street. Is there anybody here for that? No. Ken, did we skip this one? The NRAG, we did. The yeah. NRAG. I don't Are I, you guys here for the hearing for? Uh, I think Jackson. that was continued. The I'll read it. The Jackson. Yes. <coughs> Continued public hearing regarding the abbreviated notice of resource area delineation filed by Dave Calhoun Saxon Partners, LLC, 25 Recreational Park Drive, Suite 204, Hingham, Mass., for the delineation of a perennial river, inland bank, and intermittent stream at 28 and 34 Cherry Street and 4547-63 Memorial Drive. Is there anybody here for that hearing? So there's nobody here presenting. They they said that um, they would come back in the spring and ask to do their um, delineation. So I would say probably next month they'll probably be here. Okay. Yes. Good question. Is is this an open hearing? Do you want some commentary now, or should we come back? I would come back when the when the when the applicant is here, um, because basically they need to delineate the wetlands first. So this is what this is for. So when they come back, you can ask as many questions as you'd like. Okay. Moving on to new and old business. Okay. Discuss and sign orders, conditions, and determinations of applicability. So we have, I believe, the two we, negative two RDAs. Yeah, we did the RDAs, mm -hmm. um, and I think we have six six fifty four South Street. Uh, six fifty four South Street. We have to still vote on and um, right six fifty four South Street. So do we have any discussion? Um, we had talked about pervious pavers, native plantings, and the condition that they the hot tub uh, not drain towards the wetland. Correct. So do you, do you want to just make a suggestion that he use pervious pavers, or do you want to make it mandatory? I don't want to make it, I don't right. know that we're up to making it mandatory yet, but... I think I think a suggestion was fair. Mm -hmm. I, the only other thing would be that the hot tub, what is that, 300 gallons or something, you could probably let it stay in place for a while until the chlorine depletes, and then it'd be fine to run in any direction at once. Without how, how long too it much takes a couple of weeks, like probably. Erosion that it causes. Yeah. But with the pavers, it would... If it can go down yeah. through the pavers, then it's going to... Yeah go downwards. It's going to infuse back into the land. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so would somebody like to make a motion? 
I move that we issue an order of conditions for, again, I've lost it. 654 South Street. 654 South Street um, for the construction of removal of a shed and construction of a patio and outdoor kitchen area um, with the suggestion that pervious pavers be used for the patio um, and and the condition that native plants mm -hmm. be used in the landscaping and that the hot tub um, when it is drained does not go run directly to the wetland oh, good. I second it um, all right any more discussion um, all in all in favor Aye. Aye. All right, so the next item on, next one we have to vote on, I believe, is um, 170 Hartford Turnpike. All right, I will move that we issue an order of conditions for the construction of a self-storage facility and associated site work at 170 Hartford Turnpike. All right. <clears throat> We have any <coughs> do we have any discussion on this? That order of conditions would include the size of this, the the pervious the amount of impervious surface. Well, the order of conditions for for this project um, that we're voting on, uh, uh, which is five times larger than the original one. Right. Um, also, the our our peer review, um, as you read into the record, con conflicts directly with what um, with what they're saying, and, and it's going to disturb many more square feet of, of habitat um, and impair the the ability of the buffer zone to protect right. the wetland. I mean, there is there are, they are, they already have an order of conditions on this site, and they already have an approved. Um, Build it to approve buildings that could be built on this site in a previous order. So um, I, I'm not, in, not too inclined to approve this order that's five times larger than the previous approved. Anything? Should we vote on that? I would vote on either no. We're not, no. We're not going to issue there's an order. A motion, so there's a motion on the floor. Motion yes, I heard a motion. seconded. Right. Has it, it been I, seconded? I, it's, it's not, not been seconded. seconded. So okay. Somebody want to second it? <laughs> you, <laughs> you have to second it. You do have to second it, and then, second it and then yes, you can okay. vote to approve or then, deny. Then, I, then I'll second the motion. All right. So <clears throat> all those in favor of issuing an order conditions at 170 Hartford Turnpike, all those not in favor of issuing an order condition at 170 Hartford Turnpike for the reasons stated. Aye. 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 I. So we denied, and you have a, a layer, you know the reasons why, and we have it written down, and we have our report. Yes. And there also was a previously recorded order on the site. So yeah. yeah. There's a lot of different things we can add to that. Okay, so I think that concludes everything we can vote on. We, we voted on the, the trees to be cut down on Old Mill, correct? Yes. Okay, we did. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Um, certificates of compliance. Um, these are carryovers from previous months. 11 Sunset Lane, um, they had come for a certificate of compliance and they had done additional work that was not permitted, so they're preparing a notice of intent. Um, I'll check in with them because it's been a couple months and it should have been prepared by now. Um, and then 190 and 198 South Quinsigamond Avenue. Um, they have closed out their previous order of conditions and are still, um, the, the house has been completed, but there's still, um, unstable, um, terrain on the site. There's, there's areas where the, the grass has not grown in yet. So I'd have concern about erosion occurring if it was approved, um, and no recourse for that. Um, so I would not recommend that you sign either certificates. Okay. 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 Um, updates, Oak Island site review and uh, machine project. Um, I spoke with the chief, police chief today, and I sent over a few 
um, activities that I think we had discussed at a site walk. And um, he was amenable to the following um, activities not, not to be permitted. And um, I, think, I think number one, swimming, camping, fires, consumption of alcohol, beaching or mooring of watercraft, motorized vehicles, cutting of trees or brush. And then all, um, you carry out all your trash. He also mentioned that he would like uh, to see a larger sign when you enter the conservation area, a larger sign. At the stone wall? I would say probably right there. Um, and then it should be printed in multiple, okay. I'm sorry, multiple um, languages, English, Spanish, and Portuguese. And that would be not just telling them that they're entering conservation land, conserved land, but also listing the expectations. Correct. Maybe two signs. I, I mean, there may, be, they may, there may need to be more of these, the ones that yeah. talk about the prohibited activities. Can I, can I just ask a question about dogs? Uh, when we were there, there was someone who was walking a dog, and he wanted to be walking a dog there because there were no dogs off leash, because there weren't other people with dogs. Um, and I have had a lot of experience with dogs off leash in public areas and have been bitten several times. Um, I don't want to put so many rules that it's ridiculous, but dogs off leash um, in a large public area where there can be several dogs can really be uh, really unpredictable. <coughs> they are dogs. They will behave like dogs. We have a leash law in town, I believe, and all dogs are supposed to be leashed. So, so a, that's not a dog park. A, so. a picture of, of a dog on a leash? I, I mean, it's, it should be known. You, if you have a dog in town, it's supposed to be leashed. It helps the police times. maybe if there is something they can point to? Um, we, can, we can ask that and we can suggest it. Like I said, I su I, these are the suggestions I sent over today and these are the ones that he was comfortable with. Yeah. Um, and he was just mentioned that we have multiple languages, a large sign where we enter. And then I, you know, I, I was thinking we could put some smaller signs in other areas that that we towards the beach area mm -hmm. and exactly. another another and you know we could put four signs maybe and would there be any fines i don't know if we can issue any fines on that on any of those i think that would be a police matter to issue fines a police matter to issue fines i, I don't know about the fines i can look into the fines can we look into That's fines true. absolutely yeah, thanks Signature copy. Um, or a, it, it, when we're designing the signs, okay. yeah. okay. just I think any oh, yeah, yeah. icons, yeah. standard icons, okay. pictures would be helpful. Um, there's also language. a lot of huh? universal yeah. Language. universal yeah. images. Yeah. yeah. Um, I also that that entire area is full of signs saying "Don't do this, don't do that," right. and so I would li like at least one of our signs to be welcoming. Okay. Yes. So yeah, perhaps a, a single a sign at the entrance saying "Welcome to the you right. know, Shrewsbury yeah, sure. Oak Island Conservation Area." Right. <laughs> right. Please enjoy your time in nature. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something along those lines to kind of yeah, that's, bring them that's into the space. That's a good one. Yes. Very it good. might be a good demarcation too of like mm -hmm. you've you've right. left state land and entered town land, right. and, um, and will be a little more congenial than know this, know that, know the other thing. Right. <laughs> I know it's a little harsh, but I mean, th there's been a lot of activity going on over there that people have kind of upset about. So if I think hopefully we can get these signs out sooner than later, um, with the blessing of the board, I would recommend that we we ask that we get four signs printed, one larger, and we review the final language before they go to print. So is that something that we could do before our next meeting? Yeah, I should be able to work it out. I know um, a lot, several other departments within the, the town Can DPW make signs, make pretty, signs? Yeah, okay. pretty frequently. I know we have money racket. for us. We have money to pay for them? Um, yes, we probably do. Okay. All right, so does somebody want to make a motion about the signs? I move that 
help help me with this. I move that we mm. create and print and post signage at Oak Island um, to include the language that the language that, that, we, that, we, that we, we have communicated with the police department about. Correct. I second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good. A larger discussion in the future might be um, around kind of our conservation land in general and establishing kind of ground rules for all of it. So yeah. well, this, um, the sign could be at some point reference a document saying, here are all the things you're allowed to do and all the things you're not allowed to right. do on our conservation land. So it doesn't have to be a big long list condensed into a little tiny sign. Mm -hmm. right. mm. Okay. Um, and on that note, we also have, um, oh, I need to stop sharing because we have um, Cheryl here. She's um, part of Project Machine. Um, they were hoping to do so that at the previous Lake Quinsigamond Commission meeting, they proposed to do a machine burning, which is the, um, the name for the canoes that were historically used on Lake Quinsigamond and throughout the, the Northeast. Um, they are, in order to create one, you, um, I don't know if Cheryl, you would like to step in at some point, but. Um, Whenever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were oh. traditionally created by hollowing out the interior of the boat by burning them. Right. Um, so they would like to do another machine burning. There's currently one scheduled for um, to be done at Lake Street Park in June. Um, exciting. Yes, yeah. Very exciting. Um, yeah. The water might get too high. They might run out of machine burning space. Um, so another proposal would be to have it at Oak Island. <laughs> so Cheryl and I were also trying to navigate us establishing all of these rules that say no fire, no camping, no, no, no watercraft. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, no watercraft. And then um, kind of transitioning to here's a cultural thing that requires all of those things to be done <laughs> for, a, for at least, what, a week at a time, you'd say, Cheryl? Uh, it's approximately a week. It depends on the wood itself. It wouldn't, wouldn't be longer than that, but it, it could end up being a little shorter. It depends on how dry the log is itself, but um, probably five to seven days. We um, we secured part of Lake Park from with DCR, and they're very excited about doing it with us. But as I'm watching the lake levels come up, it's uh, for those that are, I'm sure you're familiar with the park, but it's not the beach area. It's on by the brick wall that is uh, where the beach area is on top of. So it's that part of the shoreline that's very thin and narrow. And as I'm watching the lake level come up, it's not leaving us a lot of space there because we would need to have um, two or three tents because this is a 24 seven burn. It's around the clock and um, we have someone always there always monitoring. So we need to make sure that whoever is there has a place, you know, to shelter. Um, but, you know, so I'm wondering, uh, Peter Collins had mentioned the area at Oak Island and um, we had already gotten the permit secured with DCR. It's such a nice area down there. I never I had seen it, you know, um, prior to this. And he suggested that I reach out to you as possibly a backup or possibly in the future if we wanted to do a second one. <clears throat> Let me just add that um, this is something that, you know, in addition to it being culturally significant for us, there's something even more, like we've done burns throughout the state over the last two or three years, but this one has a particular significance because of the three Mishunish, that's the plural for Mishun, the three that, that are at the bottom of Lake Quinsigamon that date to before King Philip's War. So if you aren't familiar with that project, I'd ha be happy to make you familiar with the project. It's my, I love it, it's my first love. I'm the director of it. And uh, so we, we are hoping to connect our youth with our ancestors that made those uh, Mishunish that are there and, and, and bring us all back together. and connection with the water and, and our ancestors. Um, I think it's it's a, a positive, great idea. I would just suggest that you send something to us formally in writing with um, some dates that you have in mm -hmm. mind. That way we can um, we can review that and look at it. I would say that this isn't this wouldn't be a campfire per se because you are you're creating a, a machine. So it's it's a controlled Right. Right. 
It's controlled. Yes, There'll be somebody there at all times monitoring it and as the process continued. It's not recreational. It's Correct. purposeful. Correct. Right. No, I, I, I oh. see a definite distinction between what you're, what you're proposing to do and what we're trying to keep from happening. <laughs> 100%. Yeah, and, and I've seen this before many years ago, and it was a really um, a very controlled fire uh, within the tree and a slow, gradual process. Uh, it's not Correct. flames reaching out of control up Correct. into the trees or anything. It, it's definitely a, um, it's a controlled burn because we want, you're actually molding and shaping the craft. And if um, you aren't carefully watching and controlling it at all times, the, the sides, the gunnels, you know, it just, they get too thin, uh, then it, it's essentially useless as a, as watercraft. So, um, you know, we're constantly monitoring it there. It's very careful. We go through, make sure we've got um, fire safety equipment, fire extinguisher there. It's as close to the shoreline as we can get it. We bring everything in, bring everything out. Um, I mean, like I said, DCR is so strict with, with everything that they do, you know, and that's a good thing. Um, but we've managed to meet all of the requirements that they have put in place thus far. So I, I don't think there would be a concern as far as safety at, um, on that end. We may have to also reach out to the fire department to make Absolutely. sure that they're on board. So um, mm -hmm. if you send us a formal request with some times, okay. dates, and whatnot, um, then um, with, through the board and through LEAR, we'll make sure the other town boards and agencies knows what's going on and get their input so we have, mm -hmm. hopefully have a positive response. Okay. Anybody Just else? Just procedurally, if it's going to be on our land, we have to vote on it and say that we permit it. Does, does there have to be a formal vote, or can we just agree to it? Um, you, you might do a formal notion, motion, just so if we put together a letter, basically, that will kind of serve as the, the permit mm -hmm. um, for it that they can have with them, just so, you know, if anyone is, for some reason, not aware of what's going on, they can, you know, okay. you can be like, no, Conservation Commission gave us permission for this. We're on their land. We're have gotten permission from every single person <laughs> to do this. Um, but it so starts with point. a formal, like a, yeah. a written request, though. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Get, get us a written request, get times, dates, the whole nine yards. Yeah, then and we then, can put together And we can put together a request and make sure all the, all the boards and, and departments have it and know and, and you're awesome. Okay. Okay? Yep, wonderful. All right, good luck. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Bye. Anything else to come before us tonight? I think Martha has a yes. fun thing. Yes, um, one last thing. It is that time of year when the Community Preservation Commission Committee um, seeks board input on potential projects, um, areas of, of interest that the that could be served by the Community Preservation Act funds. Um, and as the Conservation Commission representative to the Community Preservation Committee, um, I am here to solicit ideas and, and hear what your thoughts might be for how our, um, how our funding that is generated by the community and matched by the state can be used in Shrewsbury. Mm. Um, I think I have one idea right off the top of my head. I have talked to some people who are on what the Trails Committee, is that what it's called? Right. And um, they're interested in uh, creating some trails uh, off of Gulf Street, actually. Um, there's some wetlands there. There's a lot of land that is... Um, I don't believe it's buildable. I think it's all wetlands. And they were wondering if they could put in a trail there. And I have never walked that particular area, ever. But I know that the Trails Committee is hoping for help. Okay, so um, some, some 
areas for um, passive recreation off of Gulf Street. I have the list from last year um, that I'm not sure that we did any of those. <laughs> <laughs> Um, one of them, which was Oak Island, uh, I don't know how right. much the signs cost, but um, if, there, if there are any other improvements, we can make it Oak Island. Um, Gouch Park, um, I had the Allen Farm down from last year. Right. And just a general comment of land acquisition. Mm. Well, so, Martha, just yeah. exactly what can um, the Community Pressure Preservation Act monies be used towards? So they can be used to purchase open space, purchase land. Mm -hmm. um, they can be used to, for improvements on land that was purchased with Community Preservation Act funds. But I'm not terribly clear on whether they can be used towards improvements on already existing. Um, land. existing. Mm -hmm. hmm. um, but if there, so I, I'm not clear. But I want I don't want to dwell on that at the moment. I'd love uh, to I'd get rather have a list of things, ideas, and mm -hmm. and visions. I think so that we can, when the time comes to be able to act on on those things, then okay. I know that there's interest. Uh, I have another idea. Sure. Um, there are a number of places in town where. There are extremely odd lots that uh, go between blocks so that behind houses, there's this odd strip of land that is now all woodland. It may only be 50 feet wide or 60 feet wide, mm. um, but it's long and it's not accessible for fire trucks. And so you couldn't like put a house down in there um, however, um, it may be owned by someone in specific who might want to stop paying taxes on it, and it could then be preserved. We For do. The town does own some of those parcels already, um, mm -hmm. historically. You and there are other ones. You guys might have been. <laughs> We're here for it during the cluster subdivision phase um, when clusters of homes would be built all smushed together and then um, open space would be, be required sort of, yeah would be required near them those parcels were taken by the town so now we do have little odd strips we do have a lot of odd little strips of land that are owned by the town <laughs> um, I think historically people have wanted to put uh, trails in them um, as a, yeah, I, I think it would be very things, interesting yeah. to have a study of where those are and how they might be able to be used to be yeah, more a walking connector between parts of town. Mm -hmm. You could probably ask the tax assessor's office to give you a list of parcels under a certain acreage with no building on it. So that might be a good um, something someone could be paid to do. Yes. <laughs> Because I know it has been um, scrapped together previously by volunteers who inevitably run out of time, um, and it's a yeah, it's a hard project to, unfortunately, to prioritize sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Here's another idea. Maybe maybe it, it doesn't apply at all, but um, I know that, uh, geez, I think it was a year and a half ago that Kevin Mizakar went through all the lots that uh, people had stopped paying their taxes on going back like a hundred years. And um, they are now owned by the town of Shrewsbury. Some of those could become pocket parks right there in neighborhoods and actually serve a great service um, for biodiversity and even for people who want to sit down with a baby in a baby carriage mm -hmm. and talk to the baby for a little while and then keep going. So they're already owned by the town, though. They are owned by the town, yes. Okay. It might just be, potentially could be funding towards kind of making them. Developing them. Developing them or just kind of making them better known because I think a, a yeah, big part of it is like we didn't, I don't think any of us had been to Oak Island before. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, that's a, a large parcel of land that's owned by the Conservation Commission that we had never, ever been to. It's a beautiful parcel. It abuts Lake Quinsigamond, the shining jewel of the town of Shrewsbury. And so kind of getting the knowledge of, like, what parcels we own and, and kind of relaying that to the public so that they do have the opportunity to kind of recreate. There is a dearth of nature in people's lives. Yes. And if there were a... a parcel that were large enough to do this to have a small path go through and have it designed so that it didn't encourage um, really rowdy bad behavior um, so it would have to be somewhat visible mm -hmm. you know to everybody uh, but I mean for a baby to be in a baby carriage and look up and see trees is really good for them and it's good for their parents as well um, nature actually helps people with their m mental health. Mm -hmm. And so maybe some of these could be made part of people's lives. Yeah. Um, well, there is still the, uh, the Allen property, mm -hmm. um, mm. which I believe is in the hands of the, not the property itself, but... Um, the town, the town manager had indicated an interest in, uh, in working on getting that as open space, if not the buildings themselves. Um, so I, I guess I don't want that one to, to go away. That would be a, a, a nice one to. It would yeah. be a nice have addition. A nice open space. That would be fantastic. Because yeah. there's nothing in that whole area. It's all. That'd be great to have. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? before the board we have a motion to adjourn so move all those in favor aye, aye. aye. Oh, we didn't second oh second somebody second i second. i second it Sorry. okay aye. 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 aye it is not yet 11 o'clock why are we going home <laughs>